You know what used to bother me about going to the beach? It wasn't the heat or the sand or anything like that. It was having to park some distance from the beach and then lugging all that stuff to the sand, sometimes needing to make multiple trips. Well, as Floridians that love the beach, we finally broke down and bought a beach cart to ease that pain. This was a review of the Angler's Fish and Mate 310 Beach Cart. So here's the thing about beach carts. It's all on the wheels. Small wheels are virtually useless in soft sand. We watched people pulling inexpensive carts and wheeled coolers at the beach for a long time before we made our decision. You'd be better off having skis than these things in the sand. The struggles that we witnessed when these things hit the sand are heartbreaking. What you really want is something like this, these big balloon wheels. Wheelies has kind of been the de facto standard for quite some time when it came to these balloon wheels. I don't know if they owned a patent or what, but uh, look at the price on these things. 137 bucks. that's for one wheel, and that's a 16.5 inch diameter wheel. There are cheaper options. Um, this is Angler's wheels. These are actually the wheels that come on the cart that we bought. So you can get a set of these two wheels and an axle for about 150 bucks. There are some other options as well that we can look at later. So this is Angler's website. Uh, you can go to fishandmate.com and that'll end up just forwarding you to this website. It's rodrack.com. You actually have to put in www.rodrack.com in order to get here and browse around and, and see what their options are. Um, sometimes they, they do sell from this website itself, but uh, oftentimes the stock of particular carts can be low and you won't actually find all of the models listed here. Um, they have a junior size and a senior size. The junior size cart you can kind of make out by um, the, uh, the fishing pole holders kind of wrap around the side here and there's no support in the middle. Uh, so this is the junior one with the smaller wheel options. So it starts around $200 or so. That same junior cart with the larger wheels, uh, you see right here, about $280 for that. Uh, stepping up the game a little bit to the senior size cart, which is a bigger, uh, bigger carriage there. It's got these wheels on it. They aren't balloon wheels. They are larger, probably do okay on sand, but we wanted to uh, have something a little bit more than that. So we did uh, opt to go to the, the larger cart and the larger balloon wheels. Uh, the thing you'll notice here, yeah, price doesn't look too terrible at 270. Um, however, it is out of stock at Academy, who often has it in, in stock. Uh, Cabela's is the other place you can find it sometimes. Also back ordered here, uh, so not in stock there. There is one other option, and this is kind of the Mac Daddy. It's the, the, the larger carriage with even larger size wheels on there. And my understanding is that, uh, is that Angler actually is getting these wheels uh, uh, from China. These aren't wheelies. They're having somebody else make these, so not, that's the reason why they aren't quite as expensive as the wheelies. Uh, but when you, once you are in the market to, uh, to go and pick one of these up, I'd recommend checking out Google Shopping. Um, they'll give you links here to people that Google seems to think have it in stock. A lot of times they don't, but you can just click through here and see what the options are. We ended up going to a, uh, a local hardware store, Ace Hardware, here in Titusville, and that's where we found that they uh, had the cart in stock when no one else online seemed to. We did pay a little bit more for it after taxes out the door and everything. It was probably about $340, $350. So that was a little painful, um, but uh, we're happy with that decision, and we don't mind uh, supporting the family operation over there. I can't say that assembly was completely drama free, but it was all my own fault. I didn't notice that there was still a bag of hardware in the small box. So I became increasingly convinced that they didn't include it. After much gnashing of teeth though, the kitten found that I had missed seeing them in the small box. Also while unwrapping parts off of the carriage, I inadvertently cut the monofilament line used to hold the locking pin for the handle to the carriage so you don't lose it. This wasn't a huge fail though. I just replaced it with some 25 pound braid. All in all, assembly should be simple if you pay attention and don't do stupid stuff.
One of the big advantages of an all-aluminum cart like this, with wheels that are like balloons, is how lightweight it is for its size. One person can easily carry it. The width of the wheelbase may not fit through your front door, but it does if you carry it on its side. We found out later there's not even a need to take the handle off to get it in and out of our front door. We're pretty stoked for the first trial run at the beach. One thing we figured out pretty quick was the need to come up with a better way to haul the cooler and the lounge chairs at the same time. We also found out that once the cart was loaded down, even with the rear stand in its highest position, it still had a tendency to scrape on uneven terrain if you weren't careful to keep it well balanced as you pull. Rolling on the sand is a breeze. I'd estimate that our fully loaded cart was only about 20% more difficult to pull on sand compared to asphalt. And that's a huge improvement over feeling like you're dragging a dead body. We did go ahead and try to make some improvements. It needed a better floor to be able to hold bags and buckets better. I got the idea to use a ceiling light diffuser from a review I read on Amazon. It works pretty well, but you have to be careful about the edges. That brittle plastic is razor sharp when it breaks as you're trying to cut it to size. I also attached some PVC with cable ties to hold our chairs and umbrella. It's still a work in progress, but it seems to be getting the job done. Now for the question. Would I recommend you purchase this cart, even at the hefty cost of $300? Ouch, yeah. I'm going to have to go with a definite maybe. Don't get me wrong, it's an awesome cart, but it all depends on you, really. If you have a good amount of discretionary budget and you aren't the hardcore DIY sort like we are, yes, absolutely, this is for you. Me, however, I'm having a tinge of buyer's remorse after having done a bit more research online. I feel a sense of shame and like I missed a good opportunity if I have the opportunity to make something for myself, even if the material costs end up being the same as purchasing it pre-made. We'll explain that one in a future video. So knowing what I know now, would I drop $300 on it? Probably not. I rationalized the purchase because I didn't have a welder and spool gun capable of welding aluminum. As it turns out, there are other options for construction of an aluminum carriage though. You can buy the square extrusion at a big box store, and there's a company called Fastec that makes nylon corner pieces. Zero has them for pretty cheap. You can butt joint with some small L brackets, and the options for lesser expensive balloon wheels seems to be growing on a daily basis. I really like the idea of designing exactly what I want from scratch. I'd certainly raise the carriage about five inches above the axle to start. But in the end, I can't claim to be unhappy with the purchase. I'm just weird like that. Guys, if you like DIY stuff around the home front, definitely subscribe to our channel. We plan on posting a ton of projects in the future. I wanted to just get our feet wet on this YouTube thing with this video. So don't forget to like it if you enjoyed the content. Have a good one.